Okay, Bob. My friend Owen had uh, four extra uh, reservations for a Colorado River rafting trip through the Grand Canyon, and he offered them to me. I thought it was a perfect vacation opportunity for my wife Mary and me, and for our friends Doug and Martha, who introduced us to rafting almost 40 years ago. I mentioned to them that it would be an eight-day trip with no showers and sleeping on whatever beaches we could find. Doug had just one question. When do we begin? Where do we go? When do we start? Mary and Martha, though, said, you guys have a fun trip. We'll stay at a resort and we'll meet up with you afterwards. <laughs> there was 20 of us on the trip, which made for an efficient bucket brigade as we loaded the raft every morning with our sleeping bags, the food and cooking equipment, and all the supplies. Then, every afternoon, we reversed the direction and we unloaded all of those things again. Every day, we beached the raft and took hikes into side canyons. We were really surprised to find that even though we were in the middle of the desert, most of these side canyons had interesting waterfalls. Oops. <laughs> we, are down, we are just downstream from the Glen Canyon Dam, which was built about 60 years ago. Even though the dam produces electricity for six states and provides recreation on Lake Powell behind it, when it was built, there were some unexpected negative consequences for the canyon. One of them was due to the water being released from the bottom of the dam. That water is very cold. Before the dam, water in the canyon could reach 85 degrees in the summer but now it rarely gets above 50 degrees, and that was too big of a shock for the native fish. So now three of those species are gone. Before the dam, flooding would reshape the beaches and replenish them with silt from upstream. The floods would also scour the banks and wash away some of the new plants. But now beaches are eroding and the plants along the river's edge are thriving. Each day, we would beach the raft and take hikes into some side canyons. We were surprised that in the, we were in the, middle, in, in the middle of the desert that these side canyons had so many uh, waterfalls that fed into the river. It was a bigger surprise to see some of the specific uh, sources of water. This spring, for instance, at Vasey's Paradise comes right out of the wall of the, the canyon wall and, and feeds the ecosystem down below it, down the cliff. Another interesting source of water was Havasu Creek. The minerals in Havasu Canyon make this creek water a surreal powdery blue. The contrast of this blue creek to the colorful canyon walls was really unbelievable. And it was a little eerie when we first jumped into that pool to take a swim. The canyon is about 280 miles long, and the river drops about 2,000 feet. That may seem like a lot, but that's only about seven feet per mile, and that really isn't enough to make for rapids. However, the boulders and debris that get washed out from these side canyons narrows the river and does create rapids. There are 80 named rapids in the canyon, and some of them are pretty dramatic, and you'll certainly get drenched. Before the dam was built, some of these rapids were so big and so dangerous that only the very best and most experienced boaters could navigate the whole canyon. Every afternoon, we found a beach big enough for us to make camp. Some had tents, but most of us just put sleeping bags on plastic tarps, and we slept out under the stars. It did rain a couple of nights, but we just wrapped those tarps around us, and that kept us dry enough. While we were getting settled, the crew turned into chefs. Somehow they were able to prepare first class delicious spreads for every breakfast and dinner. Every meal was different and they even baked a cake one night. While they were preparing dinners, the rest of us had happy hour. <laughs> it was a great time for us to get to know each other and to share some refreshments. We found that Using nets to hang over the edge of the raft into the chilly water was a great way to keep the beer cold. 
There's a rule in the canyon, leave nothing behind, and they meant nothing. Thus, our portable toilet. The rookie member of the, of the crew had to lug that thing off of the raft and back onto it every day, and no matter where he put it on the beach, it wasn't very private. But we did have a great view, and we had plenty of Lysol spray. As we floated further down the canyon, more and more layers of rock were exposed. We learned about how the different types of rocks were formed, and we can see easily that the rocks along the river were much different than the horizontal sandstone layers at the top of the canyon. Those layers at the top of the canyon are believed to be up to 500 million years old, while those at the bottom may be a billion years old or even older. Strangely though, there are places throughout the canyon where there are no rocks that were formed during the gap between these two periods. Our last hike was to one of those places where those old rocks and really old rocks met. It was amazing that we could put our hands on the side of the canyon wall and at the same time be touching rocks that were formed a half a billion years apart from each other. This was a fantastic adventure, and I just barely scratched the surface tonight. Doug has been bugging me to go again, and I am ready, and I recommend this trip for anybody. Though, I encourage you to downplay the toilet situation and the sleeping arrangements if you want to encourage your friends to join you. <laughs>